In this part of the tutorial, we are going to calculate the wind force that will act on the tank in accordance with the American Society Civil Energy Standard. The wind design, unlike the seismic design, no need to be defactored because we will use the nominal wind speed instead of the ultimate wind speed. This is something that need to be careful with because from the American Society Civil Engineers version 10 onward, the standard use ultimate wind speed. In any case, the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard in section 5.2.1 explains what to do if you are working with the American Society Civil Engineers version 10 or later. The first thing to do is recollect the basic data for the design, which is summarized in this table, where the basic wind speed was obtained from the local standards and from the American Society Civil Engineers standard, we got the exposure type defined in section 26.7.3. The wind directionality factor KD from table 26.6 and dash 1, the importance factor IW from table 1.5 and dash 2 based on the risk category which is 2, the topography factor KCT from section 26.8.2 and the ground elevation factor KE from the section 29.6. Now we proceed to calculate the velocity pressure exposure coefficient Kc with this equation, where Cg and alpha are tabulated in table 26.11 and dash 1, resulting in 1.043. The next step is calculate the velocity pressure Qc with the equation of the section 26.10.2 of the American Society Civil Engineering Standard, where Kc, Kct, KE, KD, and V were already defined. The result is 18.34 pounds square feet. Now we proceed to calculate the design wind load with the equation 29.4 and dash 1, where G is the Gauss effect on the wind, calculated with the section 26.11.1 of the American Society Civil Engineers Standard, which allowed use a value of 0.85 for low-rise structures, defined in section 26.2, where it has to meet these considerations. The average roof height is less than 60 feet and the average roof height doesn't exceed the least horizontal dimension. The tank meets the requirements. CF is the force coefficient calculated with the figure 29.4 and dash 1, with a value of 0.5. AF is a projected area, which is hard to define correctly, I assume as the 35% of the total work area of the tank, giving a result of 5,291.1 square feet. Now we can calculate the design velocity, giving a result of 41.23 kilopounds. The next step is calculate the load that will be used in the load combinations applicable from the Process Industries Practice STC 0105 standard to use correctly these load combinations. The operational and test load shall be in unit 4 per unit area and the dead, live, wind and seismic load in unit 4 per unit length. In this table are summarized the values of the design load also, include the foundation data required to design the ring foundation of the tank. To calculate the width of the ring wall, we use the equation from section 5.6.2.3 of the PAP STE 03020 standard, where B is the width of the ring wall, PT the dead load plus live, seismic, or wind load depending in the load combination. WP is the operational or testing weight load. L is the distance from the shell tank to the inside edge of the ring wall and is obtained from the table 2 of the PAP STE 03020 standard. And its value for this case is 0.75 feet. Q is the allowed bearing capacity of the soil. H is the height of the ring wall foundation that is assumed. E is the distance from the edge of the ring wall foundation to the top of the burr. Gamma S is the specific weight of the backfill soil 
and gamma c is a specific weight of the concrete. The log combination applicable to this tutorial come from the table 9 of the PAP STC 0105 standard, which are in this table. Now we calculate the width of the ring wall foundation with the equation of the PAP STE 03020 standard. For example, for log combination 8, the result is 1.54 feet. The rest of the result are summarized in this table for each log combination. With this, conclude the second part of this tutorial.